Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. So, apart from two days which have just passed, it is six months since I have had bladder distension surgery, which was for the treatment of overactive bladder, which I had for, let me think now, I've been having problems with my bladder now for going uh, this for four years, four years, and that was since I had pioneer repair surgery in November 2017 for a very prolific, horrible situation, um, and then I had another one repaired in July 2018. I've now got another one, so this is my third hernia. In the last couple of days, I've recently just been told that the mesh cone which repaired my first one was um, is mainly the whole issue. Um, and that the mesh cone is dislocating. So I've got this potential third hernia, and they can't tell me until I have the operation where they have a look under, um, under anaesthetic um, or anaesthesia, however you want to call it. Um, so it's, it's, it's difficult. So it's six months since I had this surgery. Um, I had a, a nice relief for about four months. Five months mark, I felt the problems coming back six month mark i'm back to square one but in the last couple of days it, it gives me a little bit of peace of mind to think that actually there is an end to all of this because um i had a very big appointment several days ago which actually um as i say they informed me that the, the mesh cone which my first repair from the hernias is dislocating which is causing me all the problems um which would really explain a lot of the issues i've had now if you're sat there thinking what on earth's gone wrong why why has he had all these problems so um, I have had uh, overactive bladder syndrome for a, as, as it feels a very, very long time now. And um, it all started right from when I had my first hernia repair operation. And straight away after that, I had this huge problem um, of bladder weakness, um, not being able to really uh, empty my bladder properly, um, having to rush to the bathroom. Um, I've had spells where it's got better and controlled through medication, but bladder medications um, and overactive bladder medications have a lot of side effects in terms of making your head feel really quite lightheaded. And then, of course, I have vertigo in the background as well as um, the what uh, sort of hearing problems I have and balance problems, which they've always thought was many years, but because there's not an, a definitive test for that and they have to rule out all other symptoms. So I've got that of the many years in my head. So if I'm taking, uh, and my hearing, so if I'm taking strong medications for my bladder, I can't have that affecting my head. And I've tried numerous of medications. Um, the best one I would say was the Mabegaron. And that was fantastic for a time. Um, that was a daily medication which I took once a day and which was a time relief uh, medication then it would last for 24 hours and I'd have to take it again. That medication worked really, really well. It started all the problems when I was having um, when I was having all these problems back in 2017 uh, after the first time operation. Um, as I say it's never really gone away and anyone who doesn't know what it's like to have an overactive bladder um, it's never being without that feeling of needing the bathroom. Um, it causes a lot of stress, it causes a lot of anxiety, um, and it has literally brought me to tears where it has been that bad. I've had days where I haven't been able to go out because I have literally felt as though I could not control myself. It would just be a case of I'd have to be running in and out of the bathroom all the time. Um, throughout the night, I. Um, even now, very often I am awake several times throughout the night to use the bathroom. Um, and this when this is such a long withdrawn out process and this is just only a very small snippet of what went on. But in November 2017, I had uh, my first feminine hernia repair. That changed my life. I'm now told that that was unsuccessful. That's why that mesh cone um, is dislocating. In July 2018, I had another hernia repair on the same side, which caused me a lot of issues again. And throughout all of this, I never really got away from having the bladder problem. I've seen several urologists, um, very horrible sort of dignity stripping tests, let's put it that way. Um, and we'll go into that in just a moment. But uh, after the 2018, I had a real bad real bad time. With, I've always been very slow to recover from the hernia operations and I remember from my first one um, sort of only just getting to the bathroom things like that and you can imagine um, 
sometimes how bad it could be without me sort of expressing it on here. Um, life-changing, absolutely life-changing, and it's been awful, absolutely awful. I've tried numerous medications, and then from the second hernia repair in 2018, um, I, again, I was very, very slow to recover, um, and then moving into 2019, I had lots of examinations and tests for this potential feeling. I could feel a uh, dropping sensation in my groin, which would be there with the horrible bladder problems as well. Um, and I remember having to visit a hospital about two hours away from where I live. Um, and I remember the journey just being horrendous, having to make stops with keep needing to needing the bathroom because it got to the point where I couldn't hold no longer than about 40 minutes. And then having to go back in the bathroom two, three times afterwards. So much of my day was spent with needing the bathroom. Um, and I remember having several urine tests, thinking if it was water infections. Um, and then as we went through 2019 and I had steroid injections, the dropping sensation in my groin for this potential third hernia, and I say potential third hernia because there was there was occasions where back and forth and throughout 2020, I had scans and they said I had a, a third hernia, then I didn't, then it was scarring tissue, then I did, then I didn't. Um, so I've been through a lot about that. It wasn't until uh, December 2019 I was diagnosed with a third hernia again. And even this was questioned in 2020 with being in A&E, so admitted several times through uh, severe pain with my groin, with this um, third hernia, as to speak, which we now know that this recent surgeon I've seen, who was top of his field, um, and I've waited months to see him, now believes that I do have one, but of course with the mesh comb dislocating, and it was actually when I had it examined, um, he could feel where the mesh comb was moving, and I can I can feel that there is another lump there. So personally, I feel that I have this third hernia, and I've been battling with doctors and surgeons for quite a long time for this. And of course, every time I have those problems, the bladder problems there. So I have days where I am tied to the house, and of course, we've all been tied to our homes throughout the pandemic of the coronavirus. But I sometimes find it very very difficult um, to go out because of the bladder problem. Um, and when I say bladder problem, I mean that intense urge of always needing the bathroom and then going, only getting a very short relief. Um, Kijo exercises and things like that I've used to try and manage it, where you draw yourself in really, really tight, so you're squeezing yourself, so you're so, so desperate to go. You know, that type of holding everything in really, really tight. That's, if you do that once, that's one, two, three, and then you release hold, release, hold, and that's like a key gel exercise to strengthen the muscles um, around the bladder and to hold everything tight and firm, so that I've been doing and doing and doing for what seems like years now, um, as long uh, as well as, as well as when we came into 2020, I had a urodynamics test, and that is as horrible as it sounds with tubing and things into your bladder. And of course, being a man, that is absolutely horrific because uh, the tubing and things in that way, you can only think of which way it goes in, um, was incredibly sore, incredibly painful. Um, and as well as having all these problems with my groin as well with the, with the hernias and the failed surgery, because both my two surgeries were failed, it's been, it was awful. It was awful to get through that test and the aerodynamics test measure your muscles and how your bladder contracts and how it empties. Um, so they fill you, your bladder up and they, and then they let your bladder free. So then you're emptying, filling the bladder several times and then they're, they're seeing, that's why you have all these tubes and things put inside your bladder to measure what's happening. And at this point, they told me that some of my bladder muscles weren't working correctly. Um, and then several weeks after that, this was when we were right on the cusp of the first lockdown, I had a uh, flexible cystoscopy, which is a flexible camera up into the bladder, yes, through any which way you can think of, which is absolutely horrific, and it was toe curling and painful, and I could have bit my tongue, let's put it that way, severely, um, and that was horrific, especially the swooping feeling around in the bladder, that was really difficult to get through. Now, if anybody's going through this, I absolutely, <laughs> I don't want to completely put you off, because it's only seconds you feel this for, but it is awful, it is awful, I'm not going to say it's painful, it's uncomfortable, um, 
dignity and confidence and everything like that just strips out the window, you, it goes. And I remember the in the flexible cystoscopy, I was led down and the nurse thought she was being helpful by holding my feet and my legs down. Because I, with my leg being bad with the hernias, I had a tendency to keep trying to lift my leg. And I remember the nurse saying, um, if you can't, if you if you stay calm, Bradley. If you stay nice and calm, you'll be absolutely fine. And I am a very polite person. I hate rudeness. I am not rude to anybody at all. I'd hate. I'd help absolutely everyone. And I forgot myself. And I was going for this in the tubing, and I could feel it swooping in my bladder. Um, and I said to the nurse, "I am calm." I said, "Please leave me alone." I said, "I am calm." Um, and I felt, and as soon as it was over, I said, "I'm so sorry. I, I am really, really sorry. I spoke that way." Um, but it was awful to go through. So then from this, I had several meetings with the consultants after, and they said that they found that um, the capacity I was holding was only very, very small. I was only being able, to, being able to hold a very small amount of urine in my bladder. So that wasn't helping the problems um, with the overactive uh, bladder syndrome I was having from the previous surgeries. Now, they've said many times that this could have just been a coincidence and happened. Um, I think that's absolutely rubbish, to be honest with you. I never had a problem before, any hernia problems. Before my first surgery, I never had any problems. I now know both surgeries were fails. I've had this this problem for so long now. Um, so I was offered, I was offered bladder distension surgery, but of course then lockdown hit. So six months later, I went in for the surgery um, and had a very, very traumatic time of waiting with the problem getting worse and, and being absolutely awful. And of course, it affects every aspect of your life because your mood, your mentality, if you're sort of if you're doing something quite challenging, or if you're if you're just your daily life is so affected by this problem, because of course you always feel like you need the bathroom, um, and I just remember feeling so isolated for this, and I still do sometimes. Um, I've had amazing support with comments and things from my channel. That's why I'm doing an update here, um, and I've taken great strength from that. I really have. Um, I have a fantastic support network. I really do. My parents are incredible. I have an amazing nan and lovely grandparents. And I've got everybody around me to talk to, but yet I still feel so isolated with the problem. And I suppose that's because you're all going through it, isn't it? Um, so it was a godsend to actually finally get asked to come um, for blood out distension surgery, which I had. Um, unfortunately, I picked up a severe bladder infection afterwards. Um, and throughout this, I had quite quite severe bleeding from the procedure as well, which was nasty. I had to stay in a hospital um, where I couldn't empty my bladder properly. So all these sort of hurdles, it's literally, it's never been just smooth. It's been knock back after knock back. And I remember, I remember about a month afterwards, afterwards thinking, do you know what? I can actually just be me and I can be comfortable. I don't need to rush to the bathroom anymore. I remember being told by the consultant, the surgeon who'd done the surgery, because bladder distension surgery is inflating uh, the size of the bladder with fluid and stretching uh, everything so you have a bigger, a larger capacity. Um, I believe I, I think everything took about an hour um, and with recovery and having the anesthesia and everything, I think it was nearly two hours. And I think there was one or two problems because I have an acid reflux issue sometimes. Um, so that there was a few issues, but I can't quite remember from that. But they were absolutely fantastic to me in the, in in whilst I was in hospital. Um, and it was brilliant. They were a brilliant team that really looked after me. It was actually a shock to me whilst I was in hospital because um, years prior to that, um, my nan broke her, broke her hip, who I'm very, very close to, and she was 86 when she had her surgery. And bless her heart, she seemed to turn 95. How incredible is that? And um, I, I remember thinking that the place was really, really similar and thinking this is really really strange and the ward i walked into because my nan has alzheimer's but she fights it every single what uh, every single step of the way and she always has done um, and i've been with her every step and i'm really proud of that fact and she means the world to me um, and i was in the um frailty unit ward um, and, and apparently because the ward was busy and covid was starting to become an issue um of a real big issue on this ward at the time. They were moving people around. Of course, bearing in mind this was post the sort of the first pandemic. So everybody was still really quite cautious. Um, and because the, the local hospital had been getting a little bit overran with issues with the COVID and COVID cases and things, um, I had been moved to the frailty uh, unit. And this was where a lot of people with dementia were at one point. However, 
this had been changed and now there was parts of it which was that and other parts were for people who didn't have of course problems like dementia anyway um the building went through huge renovations after my nan had her uh, surgery and she was there for five weeks and i was there every single day um and um, I remember walking into the room and I had a bit of a panic moment. I said, why am I here? Why am I here? Because I seen the sign on the door as I walked through into the main corridor and my room was at the bottom. And um, the physio who I had spent time with every day with my nan, um, she said, I remember you. You're Gwen's grandson. And that's my nan, by the way. I gave, my, gave that away, didn't I? Gwendolyn, my nan's um, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. <laughs> my nan always said Gwendolyn. <laughs> Very posh name. Um, but yeah, my dear Nan, and um, she remembered, and she calmed me down, because I had a bit, of a bit of a panic moment, because I thought, why on earth, what's going on here, type thing, and then they calmed me down, they took me to my room, and lo and behold, I was in the same room as what my Nan was all those years ago, but yet it had renovations and changed, so I was in a bed here, and right in front of me was where my Nan was, and I remember on the desk and everything, I remember sitting there with my Nan and everything, so even though my Nan has up some now, and she is very different, in a different stage of her life, but she's still with us, and she's still fighting strong, and she still looks exactly the same as my Nan, but I just know she has problems and, and issues and, and changes, it was it was amazing because it was sort of like every every couple of minutes before the surgery and after surgery I was on my on my phone to my mum and texting with my dad, and um, it was like I had my nan with me all the time even though I couldn't pick up the phone and speak with her, um, because of course her dementia it, it's difficult to do that over the phone, um, but it was like my nan was there the whole time which was incredible it was almost like her gift watching over me and she always said she would watch over me, so. <sighs> After the surgery, getting back to that, what I was saying, um, I had a severe bladder infection, but but it worked. You know what? I had um, I had thoughts a month later that everything was getting really on the way, and I didn't have these problems for some time. Four month mark, I started to get the odd day where I had the problem where the the urgency, that sort of needing to go to the bathroom more and more, but only the odd day. Five month mark when I got there, I was getting more days, and I'm starting to get worried at this point. Six months, about two days ago, no, in fact, actually, sorry, yesterday was six months, and I'm back to square one. But now I know that from having my huge appointment which I was waiting for with the post-operative uh, specialist surgeon, who was uh, top of his field in our country, has now informed me that this could well be caused from the dislocated mesh. My big question is, why didn't this get picked up before? I've seen so many surgeons. Why didn't this get picked up before? We look forward. We look forward. And I, and I pray to the Lord above that everything will be okay and that this problem will go. Because it also affects my bowels as well. I have a very, very slow system. But that's a really, really, that's really, um, so you can imagine all these issues as well as the hernia issues and failed surgeries and now having the dislocating mesh and now having that potential next hernia um, as well as recently having some problems with vertigo, which have about two nasty spells of vertigo a year, but last year I didn't have any. So I thought I'd got through all of that, but it came back. So it's been really, really awful. But now I'm waiting for a phone call from that surgeon who I recently seen and this team who I spent uh, spent a morning with. I'm told that I'm having a uh, mesh comb removed, the scar tissue removed, and they're going to go in and have a look if there's any herniated tissue and check everything around that area. Um, if it would be causing any problems with my bladder or anything on bowels. If, um, and what can be done and they're going to do it. So, fantastic. So, yes, it is nasty that the bladder problem is back. And yes, I'm back to that mode of really having to be really difficult and cautious where I go. Because, of course, with COVID and everything, things being closed, there's not many public bathrooms around either. And I always need the bathroom now, um, so I need to know where one is. So car journeys and things is particularly difficult. First thing, if we go, if I go shopping or go to the store or anything like that, I need to use a bathroom before I go before I leave the house. When I get to where I'm going, I need to go again. I need to go before I leave. Um, I'm not on any medication now, so I still keep doing those bladder kijo exercises just to try and keep everything as strong as possible. Um, but I was told when I had the bladder distension surgery that that um that it would only last for six months and i would potentially need to have it done again it could last six months it could last longer it may not last so long and i'm thankful i got the time and the relief i did from it 
It was quite scary having the bleeding I did have after it, so I wouldn't really be interested in going back there again. Hopefully, when this mesh comb, because don't forget, it's been in there since November 2017, we're now March 2021, I'm hoping that all of this goes away, um, and I'm hoping real soon I will be able to update you on my channel that it was all a thing of the past. Okay, so you're probably tired and sick of me going on about that um, and listening to my voice, but thank you very, very much for being here on my channel and listening. My subscribers mean the world to me, and it's great to have you here watching, and all my views mean the world to me. Um, my comments, questions, and all sorts of things has got, really, really got me through from my subscribers, and I've had lots of support, so thank you very, very much for that. Um, but for now, wishing you well. And until next time, when I will be updating you on this, I'm going to probably start merging the sort of hernia journey. If you are looking on my channel, it's the My Hernia Nightmare. Um, it's all sort of in one because, of course, my bladder problems are part of um, my hernia journey as well because I've had two failed uh, hernias repairs. So this would be now my next surgery coming up. This would be my fourth surgery. So the First hernia uh, repair, my second hernia repair, the bladder distension surgery, it's all relation to that issue, and then the next surgery, and hopefully that's my last. <laughs> okay, thanks very, very much for watching, and until next time, we will see you then. Bye-bye now.